June 3rd is where those positions will be built or there will be a wait for, say, midday on June 4th? No, I think, Tamana, the street was expecting these kind of numbers, okay? And it had gone light deliberately on the, on the safer side, assuming that these numbers did not come through. But now that these exit polls are showing the numbers which the street has kind of priced in, I think you will see a decent uh, amount of uh, build-up in positions again as well. And then, of course, I think the big big day will be on Tuesday. From the time the market opens, we'll keep getting the numbers and the leads. And accordingly, I think it will react to it. But broadly, I think uh, kind of a status quo, 10, 15, 20 more seats for BJP NDA was what was the kind of base scenario. And that seems to be playing out in these uh, opinion polls. The problem will be if the numbers are lower than last year. And it's not that to do with the, you know, the stability in the government, but more to do with how will the government, or how will BJP NDA interpret those results? Because if you get less number of seats, then you're going to tilt more towards populism. And that's not good for the market. But if you have the same number of seats or higher, then it's just a vote on progress. It's a vote that the government policies have worked. And uh, that's what India wants more and more from the NDA and BJP. And that is why I think will be reflected in the stock prices. So uh, just that, uh, how does BJP and NDA and how does the country at large interpret the numbers? I think that's the more important question on hand because less number of seats than last time would mean that they'll have to do more populism and maybe more alliances. Uh, and, you know, uh, that's something which the street will not like. But higher number of seats means that they will go even more strongly on all the economic policies which they have followed and whatever un, whatever work was not done, they will take those even tougher decisions and maybe bite the bullet on some of the more controversial aspects of the economy. What is, what is in that wish list, Deepan, in terms of controversial aspects of the economy? You know, I, I always wonder because a lot seems to have been done. So that, from that point of view, what is, uh, uh, what, what is the street looking out for? Oh, I think uh, that labor policies, you know, I know that it's a state subject, but yeah. you know, they could put that down uh, considerably because they want to focus on manufacturing and industry and they want to attract FDI over there. So that's one thing which where reforms are much needed. I think judicial reforms also are desperately needed considering the kind of, uh, you know, long queues which are there in settling and giving judgment. So you could have expect some, some more uh, you know, reforms over there so that, so that the entire judicial uh, system can be speeded up more appointments, maybe some changes over there. And uh, I think apart from that, even more investment in infrastructure. I think we still have, you know, we're just about catching up with the demand, with the requirement for infrastructure. But I think it would mean even more investment in infrastructure. And they will take uh, the lower interest rates uh, with both hands and all the, all the money which is coming in because of uh, India getting into the bond index and uh, accessing the global markets to fund infrastructure. That's something which they will do quite aggressively. But one thing I'll tell you, Taman, now you've not got into stock specific or industry specific, but it, this does mean that PSUs, industrial mm. capital goods, the rally over there just continues no matter what the valuations are. <laughs> Good with you. Second that, I saw you nodding. No, I think I think immediate reaction would be there in PSU, railway, defense names, uh, which have been the case. Uh, but I agree with people, some of these, you know, can't pay 50, 60 earning multiples uh, to... Uh, irrespective of you know how big or or lumpy the order book is, I think more importantly, in fact, I'm on the other side. I think the numbers are in line. It is good. If the numbers are very high, they could go ahead and do capital gain tax changes, which which may not be great news for the market. So I'll be very happy if the numbers are in line. With deep inside is the base case, which you know it's India also needs a good opposition. You know we we can do the drum beating and like big mandates and all. I think but for a for a healthy democracy, you need the right balance. And if the current numbers hold like around 350 for the NDA, 300, 310 for BJP, I think it's the right balance. You know, I'm nobody to decide the number. But I always say people give clear mandates. They've been giving it for a while. We should not question the wisdom of, uh, you know, almost what, a billion people who are eligible for vote. Secondly, I think, Tamanda, most importantly, then you have budgets. And I think if you see, we are at a cusp of a inflection point. Our, our capacity utilization is 75%. See the gross capital fix formation. It's 13, touching 30% of uh, GDP. Of that gross capital, capital fix formation, 35% is private 
corporation. So this is now private sector led capex as well. It's not just government spending and reviving the investment cycle. And any continuity with the focus government has had on the investments and capex, it's very good for the economy. And I keep 